after a few weeks break, the FIM World Motocross Championship returns to Europe. We're in Erne, it's qualifying day. We're on the start line for the MX2. We're going to have a word with Jose Butron because last time out in Brazil, you picked up your first ever World Championship race win. And I guess victory all the more the sweeter because it was last year in Brazil where you took your first ever yeah. World Championship podium. Yeah, I think that track or that country have something special for me because last year uh, I took my first podium on my career. This year I won my first moto on MX2 class. Uh, I was second overall. Uh, yeah, uh, I went third in the championship right now. Uh, I'm really motivated for, for this race uh, for the championship. And as you just mentioned there, you're now third in the championship. How easy do you think that will be to maintain for the rest of the year and possibly even nudge into second? Yeah, it's still 10 races to go. You know, it's long, long championship. Uh, yeah, Jordi Tixier, he, tomorrow he's going to ride his home GP. I have no Spain home GP. But yeah, no problem. The, the system is to, to be on the line, uh, stay like this and uh, change nothing. Thanks, Jose. Best of luck out there. Right, let's carry on up and we will have a word. Oh, let's go and have a word with Alexander Tonkov because last time out in Brazil, you scored your best qualifying result of the year. You made two really great starts. You whole shot it twice, right? Yeah, it was pretty amazing to get first whole shot in my life. I still feel comfortable after my injury. I hope we can make better and better every race and improving. And did you make any changes? Are you, are you practicing starts? Have you made any changes to the bike? Yeah, I do a couple of changes with my training. We almost completely changed my training plan, so I hope to see some improvements. And you're still on the Honda, but it's a new team for you this year. Yeah, it's a new team. Everything is new. Honda is a like good bike. I really like it. And Best of luck out there today. Um, oh, let's have a word with Roman Fever as well. You're back earlier than we expected. Are you feeling much better now? Yeah, yeah, it's my comeback now, and yeah, I have some problem uh, with my foot again, but uh, still I'm back, so I'm happy. To my home GP, so I will be. Uh, I do my best, and uh, yeah, we will see. You just mentioned you're still having a few problems with your foot. You obviously started the season in fantastic form. Do you think it's going to be more difficult now to attack the races with such? Yeah, during maybe, yeah. I need to take times with my foot, my feet. So maybe I need to have two or three races and maybe after I I can I can do a podium. So yeah. I hope, I hope for it's like this. Well, enjoy your home GP this weekend, and we're going to now see the MX2 qualifying race. Weather conditions here, round eight for the FIM MX1 MX2 Motocross World Championship. Couldn't be better. Temperatures of around 27, 28 degrees, something like that, but quite breezy as well, which meant the organizers had to put quite a lot of water down just in time for MX2 qualifying. Well, the 15 second board went up, the gate dropped soon afterwards, and it was a good start for Dean Ferris and Alex Tonkoff with Jeffrey Hurlings just in there as well. But his teammate, Jordi Tixier, ran off track and uh, got took out on the first jump there in the background. So that opened the door for 141, Maxim Dupre on the Monster Energy Yamaha. He would find himself leading in front of the massive French crowd here from his teammate, Dean Ferris, the Australian. You can see how slippery the conditions were. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Hurlings on the Rebel KTM was in third place, looking very comfortable. Well, he ought to have been because he was two seconds faster in the pre-qualifying session. But he wasn't making too much time on the leaders for the first few laps, but then suddenly he started to pull the pin and closed down the two Yamaha guys. Behind them was, for the first couple of laps anyway, Alex Tonkov on the JTEC Esther Motorsport Honda. And then the wildcard rider standing in for the rest of the season, Jason Clement on the Bud Rockstar Racing Kawasaki. He was in fifth, Dylan Fernandez was in sixth and making his way up to the front of the leaders as well. Hurlings would find a way through. past both the Yamaha guys, Dean Ferris and Maxim Dupre. But it wouldn't last long though because a couple of laps later, Jeffrey Hurlings would have a big crash. Meanwhile, his teammate, Jordi Tixier, was fighting his way through from the first turn crash. He was up into the mid-pack in around about 14th place at this stage. Jake Nichols, 45, on the Wilbur Nostar GM Racing KTM, and the standing construct KTM of Glenn Koldanoff were having their own little shindig going on, but Jake Nichols would win out on that one, eventually coming home in 8th place. Max Anstey also finding it tough, and he came home in 17th by the time the chequered flag fell. 
Alex Tonkov, though, he battled hard despite starting in fourth place, dropped down to eighth after a couple of crashes and would eventually come back home in sixth. Giacomo Del Segato would come home in 28th. Just saw him just flick through there a moment ago, the 262. But this was the damage after Jeffrey Hurlings remounted. Look at the state of the bike. Everything completely bent. Handlebars, forks, both radiators punctured. The exhaust pipe as well. And he was literally just trying to nurse it home. He wasn't riding wild or erratic. Just the big downhill double. He got it completely cross-rutted as he took off and had absolutely nowhere to go. He had to jump off the bike mid-air, landed on the plateau. That handed the advantage back to... Maxime Dupre, but Dean Ferris went through and took the lead on the last lap. Dean, what an exciting qualifying race. It really did come down to the last few seconds. Yeah, I mean, this track was uh, quite hard to pass on and, and they laid down a lot of water, so it's quite technical and slippery. But, um, you know, I just took it easy the whole race and then Hurling's come through and then um, when I've seen him crash, I thought, well, this is my opportunity to, to finally win, win a race. So, um, you know, it got pretty heavy between me and my teammate Maxime in the last lap, but... We were both uh, elbows up and I don't think there's any pride lost, but no, it was a great, great ride and uh, big thanks to Monster Energy, Yamaha, Bike at Cosworth, uh, UFO, uh, Alpine Star, M2I Helmets, 100% Goggles and just just everyone that's you know, been helping me out and Steve Dixon for always being behind me. Well, congratulations, great job. Thank you.